this is when we figure out that something's going on here. So I don't remember the message word for word, but essentially what the Braille was, was a message to me from PlayStation thanking me for showing them that games are about more than what we see. They're about what we you know, feel and, and touch and hear. Welcome to the Tony Gebhardt Show. I'll be your host today, Tony Gebhardt. I did the work, you know, I did what I needed to do, and I found people who uh, wanted to wanted me to do the same for them, and it, it has worked out so far. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tony Gephardt Show, and today I've got a really cool guest with me. He's been a, uh, I would say, somewhat of a long-term friend, maybe, to an extent. We're starting to get to know each other really well, but you know him from Hearthstone, you know him from all his advocacy that he's done with Xbox, as well as PlayStation and uh, other projects. He'll be more than certain to uh, uh, enlighten myself and and all of you um, with some of the projects that he's been involved in, Uh, but this is Brandon Cole. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, it's really good to be here. Uh, happy to be on this show. And uh, it, yeah, it really has been a long time coming, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about it for a while, so I'm glad we found some yeah. time um, on our on our time off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is, so it's fine. So, man, um, first of all, you know, so you're visually impaired as well. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how much vision do you have? Exactly zero. 100% Aha. nothing. All right. Join the total club. <laughs> There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nice. And um, how old are you? I am 37 years old, about to be 38 years old in uh, this very month, actually. Oh, wow. Well, happy early birthday. You're approaching the 40 club. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sad about that. But I, I, you know it. what? Survive. But you got to be a child at heart. That's what's most important. I, I still am. Don't worry. <laughs> I still am. Amen, man. That's great. Well, listen, man, I know you're I know you got a lot of projects. You're you're staying busy with Hearthstone. You're, you've, you've been busy with Xbox. Um, what's your main focus right now as far as employment and, you know, just keeping keeping the schedule filled? Well, uh, my main focus right now, I, I kind of I never have one. That's the thing. I never just have one. Uh, but right now, I would say, you know, still working with Turn 10, still working on Forza Motorsport, uh, making that project better and better all the time as, as we can, uh, improving the accessibility constantly on that. Um, but also I am preparing for the uh, soon to be launch of my book that I wrote. Yeah, I wrote a book. That's a thing that I did. And Congratulations. I that now. Yeah. Thank you very wow. much. <laughs> That's a hard thing to do, man. It's it's something that intimidated me. And it, it honestly intimidated me. It continued to intimidate me during the process of writing it. Like I was like, really? I hear you. Am, am I really doing this? Like, I, yeah, I hear I that. Congratulations. I'm actually in the middle of writing my own book right now, and I've been nice, working on nice. it since 2016 or so, and I, I fully Whoa. get it. It's 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 intimidating. You pick it up for four months and then you drop it. You pick it back up. You drop it like it's it's hard. It's definitely. So me, what can you tell us about the book? Yeah, well, the book is going to be a resource. That's the intention. The book is going to be a resource for game developers to literally carry with them on how to make a video game accessible to totally blind. That is the idea. The first, um, just the something first, that they can literally, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's something that they can literally carry that will tell them, you know, if you have if you have this kind of mechanic in your game, here's what to do, and you know, it's meant to be a guideline. It it, it encourages the type of thinking too, that says, you know, okay, look at all these things I have told you about, and let's say you have a game mechanic that I haven't talked about in this book, just try to think about these things the way that I've told you about them and apply that thinking to whatever game mechanic I haven't mentioned here. Sure. So you know. Wow. Wow. So it's basically just a how to. I mean, this is this will be the first how to accessibility book for yeah. game developers. I, I mean, I can't Especially think of any other total blind accessibility book. Like right. That's, that's a whole unique thing in itself. You know, there's a lot that goes into that. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, this is this is basically me just taking the knowledge and experience I've, I've gotten over the last several years and just pouring it onto a page <laughs> like, you know, and, <laughs> right. and giving it to game developers. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, I'm sure that feels exciting and feels exhilarating at the same time. Like you're now putting a, you know, this how to in the hands of the big boys so that they can go it, it, and figure it out. 
it is exciting, but I, I have to say like, there's, there's, you know, and I'm sure this, this applies to every author who is writing their first book, but like there's, there's of course the little part of me that goes, but will anyone buy it though? <laughs> like, right. Like, right. will anyone actually use it? Sure. I mean, sure. I hope they do. Well, and you know what? I mean, thinking about it now, it's like, you know, for all the newer developers that are, you know, working on their Kickstarters and, but also for, you know, Xbox and PlayStation and, you know, uh, uh, um, all the others that are dominating the scene right now, you know, there may be something here because again, as, as mentioned, this could be, and probably is the only publication that has marked, you know, uh, is targeting the accessibility for developers. Right. So your target market yeah, well, this, is very niche, but it could yeah, be this kind of territory, huge. Yeah. It could be. And, 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 you know, you mentioned Kickstarters, uh, indie developers are actually a really important consideration with this because, uh, you know, one of the one of the things that some developers may bulk at is uh, my rates, because I will admit I'm not cheap to actually hire. I'm fairly expensive, um, sure. especially for a developer that doesn't have a lot of budget. Sure. So this this book could at least be a decent substitution for hiring me. Like if they can't afford <laughs> right. me, maybe they can get the book <laughs> and use right. that instead. So I mean, well, there's not a... quite a bit. Yeah, and there's not a lot of people who could, who does what you do from an entrepreneurial standpoint, from a contractor's yeah, yeah, perspective, they're, they're you lot. know. So yeah, the lot. space is super competitive, and the knowledge is really, really, um, you know, it's masterful. It's not something that you can suddenly go do a Google search on and figure it out. Yeah, no, no, you really no. can't. You really can't. Well, wow, congratulations on that. Really proud of that. Can we get an idea of when you'll have that uh, publication released? Yes, kind of. Um, I don't have an exact date for you, but I will say that it's supposed to be released sometime this year, probably around the fall is what Ooh, we're looking at right now. Wonderful. And when you have an opportunity, if you don't already, um, send me some information for pre-orders. If you end up doing a pre-order or any resources where people can check out a snippet of it and be glad to uh, promote that and send that out. So because I know yeah, a, lot if, of, if, a lot of people will be excited. If, uh, if, if that happens, then I'll let you know. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that's great. All right. So instead of just talking business, like every other podcast and interview, <laughs> right? Um, let's get down to the personal favorites. So you're a little bit older than me. So you, you probably played a lot of M64, uh, maybe, maybe a little Sega and Genesis and stuff like that. But I have to ask somebody like me, I'm 27. So I grew up in the era of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation sure. 1. What was your favorite video games growing up? Oh man, I played so many of them though. Yeah, so seriously. Um, games I could play, I would say, let's see, uh, probably WWF Warzone back in the day. <laughs> Big wrestling game guy. Oh man, uh, did you ever play a super? Uh, what was that called? Um, SmackDown. Shut your mouth. Did you ever play that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I had all the SmackDown games at one point. Yeah. Every single one. They were good, until man, one of them, weren't they? Until one of them was stolen. Uh, ah. So that was fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yikes. But yeah, yikes. At, one, at one point I had them all. Nice. Um, also, a really good standout is uh, Def Jam Fight for New York. Really, really good uh, PS2 Ooh. fighting game. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Did, were you the ever a Grand I Theft Auto? I, I enjoyed listening to other people. Well, okay. I enjoyed listening to other people play Grand Theft Auto, but I also enjoyed occasionally firing up Grand Theft Auto using all the cheat codes and just going ham <laughs> and on everything just for that's fun. every like, blind person ever <laughs> yeah it's 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 the ultimate stress relief right it really is oh for sure <laughs> get in a jet and blow stuff up you know yeah yeah or a tank you know, or a tank for fun <laughs> five stars you know jumping all around five, yeah. five stars don't even care yeah exactly <laughs> oh how cool well that's really cool nice nice uh did you ever play any of the sonic hedgehog games I never did. I mean, I, I I think I tried maybe Sonic One back in the day, uh -huh. uh, but I never really got into it because I, to me it was just like you know I, I felt like there was not enough information. I, I know there are people that are, that are blind that have like brute forced their way through levels of Sonic, and that I, I respect that a lot. But like, yeah, it wasn't. But I hear me. you. It yeah, there's me. not as much feedback in games like that. So yeah, um, but wow, what a I I gotta say, what a uh, a decade are really of just the last five years more so to be a gamer, right? And yeah, yeah. somebody it's who is crazy. visually impaired and blind, you know, because so it's, it's different for me because I grew up, I had sight growing up. I was legally blind and 
Um, I lost my sight completely when I was about nine from an accident. So I had mm. the chance to see some of the video games growing up. But of course, yeah. this was 2005. That was when I lost my sight. So the latest, greatest thing at the time was San Andreas from Rockstar. They had just released that. And that was pretty much the great top game, of the though. chart. Oh, great game. Great storyline. So many yeah. new mechanics. That was, I think, the first time Rockstar implemented like fat and muscle and all that stuff into character yeah, development. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that was the big um, selling point too. There's, I think, there's like trailers devoted to that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Absolutely, and and I mean, just thinking about how games have morphed and changed up to this point, you know developers are putting so much more oomph on auditory quality and stereo and high fidelity and all these things, you know? Yeah. Which helps, especially, you know, in that sense. But the day that fallout becomes accessible, I'll be happy. (laughs) Oh, same, same. I mean, I I want, I want a big, big RPG like that. That's, that's one of the things I strive for. So I'm telling you, yeah, well, it's coming. I mean, we've already seen hell freeze over a couple of times with Diablo and with, yeah. you know um other games like that so i mean it's it's quite a quite a mission so well good for you in the advocacy work you know i'm sure it can be intimidating sometimes especially being with some of the big guys at microsoft i mean these are people that make decisions these are people that are you know at the forefront of development for these games i would say it is less intimidating now um it was intimidating when i first started doing this because uh you know, I, I had the uh, the imposter syndrome, you know, when I first started. <laughs> right, um, everybody does, yeah. I, I couldn't even bring myself to ask for a review code for a game so I could, you know, test it for accessibility and review it for accessibility back, back in the day. Because I was like, but I don't deserve to not pay for this game. Right, but right. Turns out when you become well-respected in the industry, suddenly you do. You do right. deserve that. And people people want to give that to you. Yeah. And people so, value what you have to say, you know, the stance that you do have and the experience that you've been able to unveil. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the opportunity that I got to, inter- to to review the PlayStation 5 itself, not to mention later the PlayStation Portal. Uh, and then there's the uh, there's the anecdote. I don't know if you want me to tell the story now, but the the gifted PlayStation 5 that I received. Oh, please. Uh, yeah. On no, launch go ahead. Day. Yeah. OK. So this was apparently engineered months in advance by PlayStation. Um, I had a PR contact there and I've, I've had this same PR contact now going back for several years and we know each other pretty well now. And this PR contact knew this was going to happen, but he was the same PR contact that got me set up with the review PS5. So I had a PS5 about three weeks early for review because they gave us uh, plenty of time to review some games and check it out and see how it was and so on and so forth. So um, on launch day, no, I, I, by the way, I had also I had also pre-ordered a PS5 because oh, that's funny. you know this I, I did this before I knew I was getting a review copy, um, a review unit I should say, uh, and so on launch day, a box shows up, and we think it's the PS5 I pre-ordered, right? It's got to be right, right, right. This is going to be my PS5. I may have to send the review unit back. I don't know. Maybe they'll want it back. I have no idea. So here I I have this PS5 just in case. I got it. I was lucky to get one on launch day. I'll tell you that. But anyway, no um, this box shows up. We open this box, and it it's it's not it's not a typical PlayStation Five box. It's actually this very very fancy uh, Perspex case, like this kind of like heavy plastic case, and on top of the case there is Braille that has been etched into the case. Whoa! And it. This is when we figure out that something's going on here. Right, right, right. So I don't remember the message word for word, but essentially what the Braille was, was a message to me from PlayStation thanking me for showing them that games are about more than what we see. They're about what we you know feel and, and touch and hear. Oh, my and, gosh. And, uh, and at the bottom, it, it says, you know, have their little play has no limits slogan. And uh-huh. so Sony had gifted me a PlayStation to thank me for my work with them. Wow. And so, yeah, it came with the PS five and also it came with, I'm not even kidding a code. Well, a bunch of, it's like a, it's like a card full of codes for every game that was launching with the PS (laughs) five. Oh man. 
a token oh, of appreciation you know, much, you know? Pretty cool. But I, I think the thing that makes this funny is, number one, keep in mind that I had still pre-ordered a PS5. <laughs> so <laughs> that box showed up about an hour later. Oh, man. Uh, so at one point on launch day, I had three PlayStation 5s in this house. Oh, my goodness. One was my review unit. One was the gifted PS5. And one was the one I had pre-ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you end up keeping the the one that you pre-ordered, or did you did you gift that? So out? what we did, what we did was uh, the pre-ordered one went to a friend of mine. The um, the gifted one I just gave to my fiance Misty because uh, it was you know it was unopened. Whereas I w- I was uh, I I asked about this in advance. I, I I emailed my PR contact. And remember, what the other reason I think this is funny is this is why I mentioned at the top of this that he knew about all of this, so he already <laughs> knew when he gave me the review PS5, when he said, yeah, we, you, we can set you up in the review program for the PS5. He knew then that I was going to get a PS5 anyway on launch day. He knew about the gift that was coming. So I just think it's hilarious. But anyway, um, I, I sent him a message and said, you know, do I get to keep the review unit? And he said, yes, you do. It's, it's oh. yours to do it with what you will. So wow. I just gave my fiance the gift of PS5 since it, you know, my review unit up, you know, was already hooked up uh, on, on my, you know, the TV that I use to play games. Right. So I just gave her the other one because it didn't really matter. There wasn't nothing different about the, the system itself, you know? Right, right. So I just gave that one to her and I, I'm still using the one that I got for review today. Oh, man. Well, talk again, just a token of appreciation from, from Sony and yeah, also yeah. just an opportunity to, you know, be able to gift. I mean, it's, that's it's always really, it was, it really meant a lot to me. Like we, we kept that, that case that it came in with the Braille on it. We kept it because it, it's like, that that is the special part of it. Like that is the thing that you know they paid money to do that, and I, I respect the fact that they were willing to to make that for me. Yeah. I, again, first of all, congratulations. That's amazing. Uh, but also, you know, thinking back, right? Let let's kind of go back to the beginning of Brandon Cole. Right. Let's let's talk about early oh you. Right. We've all Double got vibes. we've all got stories. <laughs> but what right. I want to know is. At what point in your adolescence did you realize maybe I want to go and be an advocate, right? You know, when when did that moment occur to you? I would say that it had nothing to do with my adolescence at all. Um, it took me a long time to get there. Uh, around the the early two thousands, um, when I just just kind of right after I'd moved here to Ohio, um, my fiance noticed that every time she played a game that I couldn't play. I would have these ideas in my head. You know, I, w- I would say, you know, man, it sucks that I can't play this. If only this game had this, this, and this, and I could play it. They'd be great. And I always had these ideas. And she basically, you know, called me out about it. She said, you know what? You should write these down. Why aren't you writing them down? You should blog. And uh, that is essentially what started my career. Um, I started writing that blog, uh, putting my ideas out there into the universe. That got me noticed by a mobile developer who was uh, working on a panel for GDC in 2014. Uh, that got me noticed by Ian Hamilton because I did really well at the panel. Ian Hamilton is the co-founder of the Game Accessibility Conference, for those who don't know. Um, and he invited me to be one of the speakers, the first speakers at the first Game Accessibility Conference in 2017. Wow. And it was at that conference that I connected with Naughty Dog um, to to do you know work for them. Uh, and that's, that's a story in and of itself. But uh, the rest is basically history after that. Like that was the moment when I when I finally connected with them, when I went to that studio and did what I do and figured out that what I was doing, I was doing very well. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was when I that was when I realized that this is what I wanted to do. That's when I realized this this is going to be my career. And I made it happen. So, you know, w- with that in mind, you know, a, a lot of what we try to cater to on the podcast is speaking to the young entrepreneur, the young success story of someone who really wants to strive to a greater success, you know, because I can empathize when I was when I was younger, I didn't think I'd be working in rehabilitative services or working for the government. I never thought that when I was younger. And it took me until about I was 22 to acknowledge, excuse me, that, you know, maybe this is my career path. But, you know, you started off by First of all, having the influence and and motivation by your fiance Misty, which yeah. is awesome. Big yeah. shout out to Misty yeah. for that. Uh, but just as something as simple as you know a word pl- a WordPress blog or something on Twitter, you know, can really kickstart 
a an idea because that's what it is, right? You you started things off like a seed in the garden, and in yeah. order for something to really prosper and and flourish into what it is now, where you're receiving three PlayStation fives on launch day, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, none of that, <laughs> none of that kind of stuff could have been ever expected at a time yeah. when you were just writing blogs. You know, so it it, it proves. Yeah in so many ways that success does not come from an overnight venture. It takes time to flourish. It takes passion. It takes, you know, blood, sweat and tears, but also patience. Yeah. It took years for that blog to get noticed. You know, I, I mentioned that I started that blog in 2005. Right. And I mentioned that the next, the next year I said was 2014. Yeah. So yeah. It Nine, was a long years. Time. Nine years, Nine years of, of just consistency advocacy well and in and the big thing is it's your passion that's the other thing right you know this is something you're passionate about that you love that you really strive to do and outreach because you know it's going to have a direct impact on other people that are in your shoes yeah and i i let that passion drive me too like every time i do public speaking somewhere um i tend i i'm one of those people that i i don't like to read from something that i wrote i don't like to read notes I right. like to to go in with an understanding of what I want to talk about and then speak from the heart. And that that has worked for me. That, Amen. That's where that's where my strength lies. I can Amen. I can present yeah, I can present my my passion to the the world. And uh people have told me, multiple people, not just my fiance, so it's not just her being nice, multiple people have said that my passion is contagious. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Amen. I feel it every time I you know catching up with you on on Mastodon or Twitter, you know, I just, I yeah. feel the drive through what you're saying and I, and I love it. Um, you know, and, and I, I can, I can also empathize with you in that, you know, you let the passion drive you. It's like when I get up on stage to perform, or if I'm doing a motivational speech to a group, I'm, I'm, I want to connect with them. I don't care about what's yes. on my Braille teleprompter or if I've got a yeah. set of notes, half of the time, I barely even pay attention to that guideline. And you just let that that moment in the moment you let it drive you through. Yeah, that's that's oh. how I do every every speech that I do. That's powerful. Well, congratulations again on that. And, I, and it's and you know, it, suffice to say, you probably had some moments throughout the the this journey from you know starting off in 2005 when you wrote your first blog to this point where you know things probably felt rocky. You weren't sure. You probably had some yeah. anxious moments. Would you say? Yeah, I, I would 100% say, um, because one of the biggest things that I did uh, when I decided that I wanted to do this for real was I left a full-time job. Ooh, I had yeah. a full-time job. I didn't like my full-time job, but I had one. Um, <laughs> I, I, worked at a, I worked at a call center for 10 years, and uh, I left that job with the, the need to pursue this, but also a very healthy fear that it wouldn't work out uh, sure. because you know, there, there was a chance that it wouldn't have. Right. Um, but I, I was very lucky and I, I found, uh, you know, I, I did the work, you know, I did what I needed to do and I found people who uh, wanted to, wanted me to do the same for them. And it, it has worked out so far. Uh, wow. Well, and, and I think you proved the point that, you know, success does not come from one's individual pursuit. It's, it's finding others that believe in you that have a similar drive and energy and creating that sense of community because you know we're not we're not sole you know rangers out in the field we can't we can't do that forever yeah. you know it yeah, starts it off that bad. way no 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 so so tell me right i got to ask this question tell me about a time right cuz I, I i i know i had heard um some stories here and there throughout some various interviews um about a time where you were like, whoa, you know, you had a freak out moment and it was just like, <laughs> is this real? You know, like, tell me about a story. I, I, I need to hear one. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's, that's an easy, that's an easy thing. One of my favorite things uh, to talk about uh, is my very first time uh, successfully achieving a stealth kill in the last of us part two during development, during play testing <laughs> of the, the, the things we had worked on. Yeah. Uh, it was a very sudden moment. It happened very quickly. Um, because we were working on, you know, the nav assist system, the, you know, the ability to find and locate enemies and things like that. And, and, uh, you know, we were trying all these things out. And uh, before you know it, uh, I had achieved my very first stealth kill. And it wasn't my first stealth kill in Last of Us 2. It was my first stealth kill in a, in a video game, period. 
Yes. Um, so it was a pretty big deal. And it was the moment when I finally realized that we had something that was going to work, but that the, the ideas in my brain, which, you know, Naughty Dog was being kind enough to manifest for me. Right. Um, they were good ideas and they would actually do the trick. And uh, it was a powerful moment for a lot of people, including my fiance. It actually made her cry because uh, she she knew how big a deal it was for me and how big it was, you know, for the blind community as a whole. She she knew then as well that we had something that was going to work. Um, wow. And they, they actually captured that footage. Uh, you can watch that first stealth kill um, <laughs> uh, in the... In the uh, GA Conf presentation, I believe Naughty Dog did in 2021. I want to say, I think it was 2021, um, where that uh, that video was part of their presentation. So there you go, man. I mean, talk about yeah. great representation for Naughty Dog, right? Just making games exclusive, uh, inclusive, but also like you know, this is a video game that millions of people play, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. tons of people play this game. This is like revolutionary upon all things. I mean, even still today, you can feel the 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 uh, the excitement and and just overwhelming joy. Even still today, you can oh, yeah. still feel oh, yeah. the aftermath of that. I can't tell you how many times that you know I've thought about that as I've played the game over and over and over and over again, because it's a game I love. You know, I I deeply love the game. It's not just something I worked on. It's a game that I I have absolutely loved from the moment that i could play it right so well, wow <clears throat> amazing so listen um why don't we start wrapping this up here before we do that something that is important to ask everybody who comes onto the show as someone like yourself who is an entrepreneur who's a contractor who's totally blind has made made a life for yourself right you're you're living proof that it can be done it can be done. What would yeah. you give as advice? I know this seems like a typical question, but it means something most, especially when it comes from someone who's had tire tracks on the road. What What would you say to them in, in a position? What would you say to the early version of you back in 2005? Um, stop holding onto things in your head and put them out there in the universe. Uh, if you're thinking about something, if, it's something you love. It's something you're passionate about. It's something you're always thinking about. You always have ideas about. Then that might mean something, and you should pursue that. Uh, let it out there. Throw it out there. Whether that means a blog, whether that means a, a Twitter post, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, podcast, whatever. Uh, be you know, show that passion to the world, and you know, good things might come of it. The right person might hear that podcast or see that blog post, and you never know uh, until you do it. it. It won't happen if you don't do it. That's right. It won't happen if you don't do it. Well, fantastic. Brandon, thanks for coming on to the Tony Gephardt Show. This has been a real treat and a personal favor of mine. And, you know, I just wish you nothing but the love, luck, and success, especially with the new book coming out later this year. Yeah. Definitely excited yeah, to hear about to that. Yeah. Maybe we'll get you back on the show next year to talk about the book. So, nevertheless, yeah. this is the Tony Gephardt Show, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening to the podcast today, my friends. Brandon is awesome. Definitely enjoyed having him on the show. More to come for 2024. Can't believe we're going into season three of the podcast. But before you end this clip, I just need you to do one thing for me. If you liked the episode, leave some feedback on Spotify and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps the show. If you hated it, hey, you hated it. If you loved it, let me know share it around and i hope that you have a beautiful day and don't forget to just remind yourself that you are fantastic you are wonderful every moment counts we'll see you guys in the next episode take care